Hey there, Yes Users podcast listeners. First off, a huge thank for all the love and support you have showered on us. It's like being on a roller coaster of awesomeness, and we couldn't have done this without you. Now let's get down to the business and do what we do best. That is picking the brains of amazing people to help you reach new heights in your career and business. Today we have a special treat for you. We are welcoming the phenomenal Asha Sharma, Chief Marketing Officers at The Carigars. If you haven't heard of her yet, you are about to meet a real game changer. Picture someone who can juggle process optimization, sales growth and interior design strategy all while making it look effortless. That's Asha for you. With over a decade of experience, she's like a Swiss army knife of marketing and business growth. So whether you are sipping coffee, tea or something stronger, no judgment here. Settle and get ready to be inspired. Let's dive into this exciting conversation. So Asha, welcome to Yes Users podcast. How are you feeling? Uh thank you so much Avinash and I'm feeling good and great. Thank you for inviting me for your podcast. I have you know heard about your channel also. The pleasure is all mine trust me. So let's start. Asha we all know that you are a seasoned marketing professional. So so please tell us what innovative strategies have you implemented at your various job roles and especially at the Carigars to stand out in a competitive interior design industry. Yes so um like you know Avinash when we talk about the marketing strategies and trends people are always feel about you know we are doing something out of the box or maybe something like you know uh, which never heard before right but the first important element when we are talking about the market strategy keeping in mind like you know who are my target audience right as a brand you know my clientele whom i want to convey my message right So I have worked in a multiple companies I'm basically from Delhi I have worked in real estate also right I have spent a good enough 5 6 years in you know real estate and I have worked in a design cafe it is also interior company when I was there the strategies was very different because design cafe was a very mass segment company but when I joined the Carigar I realized it's a very niche segment it's a very um like you know the premium industry so the first strategy as in a marketing officer which I build is I don't want to keep those jargon for people ki okay ready to move in 60 days 45 days because this is not possible at all right first strategy where we convey the message to people that you know when you are buying a house it's a very emotional decision so yes the designing is house also is a very very important take time and it is a process of 4 to 6 month journey and uh, like you know it took us uh, some time to convey this message to our clientele and if you will look at in our like you know in our social media and our google also like you know we are communicating with the client that whenever like you know thinking of the designing the house keep in mind that it is a time taking process right and it will going to take some time well said you know i i completely agree with that like you know techniques can never supersede the strategy right uh, understanding your user base is definitely the first strategic step that you can take and and i was doing my fair bit of research before this podcast and i understood the client audience right you may not be getting a lot of clients but the clients that you are getting it's uh, they are premium in nature right uh, right so tell us about the reach is it like just in bangalore or you guys are uh, serving pan india Okay so where I'm working currently is currently completely based out in Bangalore and the reason being is you know, like you know currently we are not expand like in a part of the expansion because Bangalore itself has a lot of market right for the interior for the niche segment and the whole idea is to be have the brand visibility in a such manner that you know whenever people think about the luxury interior they will think about the Carigar and once the brand visibility become in this city in Bangalore so definitely like the plan is coming up in the future in the different cities 
Absolutely. No, makes sense. Like, I completely agree with you. The fact that, you know, techniques can never overpower the strategy. But again, you, you have to go where the clients are, right? So like, you know, nowadays we know for a fact that somebody wants to start with something. The first thing they will do is Google it. And I saw that, you know, whenever somebody was searching best interior designers in Bangalore, your uh, Google ad was coming in. And you guys have done a decent job at uh, SEO as well, I would say. You were definitely on the page one for this particular term. Kudos to you guys for that. But anything other than that, how do you kind of like, you know, portray the fact that you guys are a premium brand, especially on social media? So what are the strategies you're using there? So as you were talking about these strategies, right? So currently our complete focus last four years, if I will say, like, you know, completely into a online marketing because it's a niche market. And I know the kind of the clientele, what we have, they are not sitting in like, you know, the Facebook or honestly in a Instagram also, right? So what we uh, like, you know, make the strategy that we wanted to be use our SEO Google AdWords in a such a way where the completely whenever the client is searching about top interior designer Bangalore, luxury interior designer Bangalore, best interior designer Bangalore, they will see us, right? So we as in a brand are visible to them. But apart from that, if I will talk about like, you know, this online activities where we are in uh, like, you know, spending in Google AdWords, we uh, adapt this um, like, you know, social media like channel also. So if you look at in our Instagram page, if you will look at our YouTube page, so what we portrayed in our social media, not for the lead generation, but as in a brand visibility, brand value addition, right? That is the reason like all our video, which you will see in the Instagram page are more into an informative, right? So that if you are looking for the interior, that like the luxury interior, when you're seeing the Instagram, you can feel that vibes. Oh, this is something I wanted to be used in my house, right? This kind of design I wanted to be used or maybe this color palette I wanted to be used, which is making a very strongly differentiator us in unlike like a other brand who are into a mass segment. Okay. Other thing what we have done is our like, you know, our client referrals also. Client referrals are one of the best marketing strategies we can wisely use them. Like a client testimonial, right? When the one person is hearing in a same like villa, and he just keep hearing about our brand. He also become a fascinate at least like, you know, so that he wants to come and reach out to us. So these two things we always keep in mind that we want to use our social media platform for the brand awareness. Keeping in mind what we are doing it so that people are getting a very strong message. You know, this is the kind of the style or maybe this is the kind of diversity itself in a design board. They will get it because it's interior. It's like a sky, right? Sky is like no limit in similar manner in the interior. People like Japandi theme, people some like contemporary, some are very much into a traditional, right? So where they will see the diversification is we are using in our social media. Yes, but for the people who can approach us, we are using the SEO Google AdWords. Makes sense. Quite intelligent. So just wanted to go in a little niche because this is a question that, you know, I get asked a lot by a lot of uh, digital marketing professionals. They ask me like, you know, when you are uh, showing your ads on Google, they have an option of demographic or the income level, right? So, so for premium brands, uh, would you recommend uh, using that feature? Honestly, like as I have taken a call, I don't want to be mapped with the income, being honest. Because I genuinely feel aspirational buying is the one category, right? If I'm a very aspirational buyer and I'm young, um, like, you know, in Bangalore, you can see the mostly the age group people who are in 25 to 35 are buying their first house, correct? And they are very aspirational buyer. They have buy a property. So they don't even mind to spend on the quality rather than traditionally using those laminates, plywood and things, right? So if we can, you know, map it with the income sources, I don't think so. It is justifying it. Yes, but definitely we have done for the geographically because currently we are into a Bangalore. So it doesn't make any benefit if I'm showcasing like, you know, my name to Delhi or Mumbai or any other person like, like you know, city. But yes. Uh, as a strategy, we have tap open in our US market, UK market, Singapore, because there is a lot of Indian who are staying there, but they have a property in a Bangalore, like especially in a Dubai. 
or a country like USA where the people are staying but their parents are here. So, yes. Wow, great, uh, great advice there. Uh, so, so for our listeners who doesn't know about the Carrigas, uh, please give them a brief uh, intro of the business. Okay, so uh, the Carrigas is a Bangalore-based 14 years of company. And this company is completely into a premium luxury interior segment, providing the best quality of the material. So the mantra is, whatever it is, we are not going to compromise on the quality at all, right? Including providing the lifetime warranty, customized personalized design services. It's Everything is a very custom, very personalized so that you are feeling the space which is made for you being based on your vision, right? How you are visualizing your space. Very well. No, thanks a lot for that. So, um, you know, customer experience is always an important element of the whole customer life cycle. So how do you maintain that while initiating, launching uh, marketing efforts, you maintain that, you know, customers are having a nice experience throughout the journey, like right from the point of generating the leads to, you know, like ending with a referral. Okay. So I'll tell you like, not about this industry in any industry who are into a customers like you know centric like a service industry customer experience at the customer retention or customer expectation right what we can name it anything is a very very important and what i have done here in when in the kari is customer experience or their like you know the retention is the heart of the our marketing and heart of the company Whatever as a company we are doing and like, you know, we are doing for our customer, right? We are here, we are serving to the customer, we are become this company because of our customer. So we are ensuring that, you know, our client personalized and their touch base, the seamless process, we will be on hold of it, right? As one of the unique step is offering a free design consultation, so when I'm seeing the free design consultation, a lot of company doing the consultation. But how we make ourselves different from the other company, when the client is coming to us, we are ensuring that based on your flow plan, I'm going to give you the entire layouting. I'm going to put it the loose furniture. The, I'm showcasing you how your walls are going to be look. Not unlikely only focusing on wardrobes and kitchen. We knew it. If it's a three bedroom, there is a three wardrobe and kitchen. This is like, you know, something we don't want to communicate to our client. We want to communicate our client that in your utility, whether you want to be a washing machine and a dryer also, if there is in a Bangalore, you know that like, you know, having a three balcony is a dream for people and mostly people have one living balcony and utility. I don't want your railing and, you know, those uh, wire for cloth hanging is visible in the living. So, you know, that smart solution. What is your pain point as a customer? We want to address that at the very first meeting so that people also get trust, right? You know, we are, as a company, we are understanding them. We are understanding their pain point. So this is a very uh, big strategy which we have implemented and it's really, really worked like, you know, very well for us. Also, on a time to time, we are conducting the feedback also, right? We are just don't want, you know, when I've sell the product and now, who you are like as a sales and marketing person normally it happens we are ensuring from the day one when we are meeting to the client where they know they have registered their self in a lead or like contact us page when the one person is calling them meeting them they know every person name they are meeting them they are seeing them the person who is meeting as a design consultant they ensure it like you know there is a people who are working for them and by the surveying, uh, once they are onboarding, we are trying to understand what could be much better, right? A lot of time, I'll tell you, our most best uh, critic is our client. And the most best friend is also in a service industry is our client. Because they always tell a very unbiased feedback, what is good, what can be better, right? And we always take our client advice very, very seriously so that, you know, we will exceed the expectation for the coming clients 
Yeah, well said. And you know, one of the strategies that you recommended, like, is it like, you know, giving a free uh, design consultation, right? Going in and like, you know, going that extra mile. Because this is also a technique that, you know, uh, I advise to a, a lot of service-based businesses, especially in the initial days to, you know, distinguish yourself from the competitors. Because the company, for you, uh, one client is a lot more important than, you know, established incumbents. But one of the challenges that I face, uh, I'm not sure whether you raise the same challenge, in your industry is that you know when you ask when you want to like give a very customized answer or consultation you ask for a lot of information right so you would have to ask for okay like in your case okay what is the floor plan what is the square fit where exactly is the area where you want to have a living balcony where you want to have a you know like you know other balcony right so in that kind of questioning a lot of times the client gets critical like you know why do you want to know this much information other people are not asking so does something like that has happened with you and how did you overcome this okay so yes we face a lot of time a lot of time this issue where we are meeting the clients you know and when we ask them okay where are you basically from what do you do for the living what's your likes what you don't like so some people are like excuse me why will I tell you okay right so we you know observe this um, scenario right couple of time and we come up with a strategy right if I'm meeting to you and if you ask me Asha what do you like uh, why would I tell some stranger, right, what I like, what I don't like? And why would I tell how many people are staying in my house? So when the client is coming to us, they are meeting to us, we are sitting with them and we tell that, uh, like, you know, breaking the ice, right? We sit with them. We, uh, like, you know, have a discussion with them why it is important our question so that they will give us an answer. We can advise them benefitly. We can advise them more uh, like, you know, something which is more beneficial for them, not for us. If they will not tell me if they do Saturday, Sunday party at home, are they a socialized person or they feel like going out and do the party, but they want to be their space like a Zen area. I'm not able to advise what kind of furniture, what kind of look and feel should we come into a house, right? So whenever we face such issue, we really generally sit with the client, we inform them that it is important and trust me, people will understand this. And you know what happened? Our meeting goes two hours, three hours, four hours and surprisingly some of the client that goes six hours, we didn't even realize that meeting goes so longer and they become like a friend. They were like, you know, ki, oh, we didn't even uh, have thought about it. So I'll tell you one very funny example. Uh, during the meeting, what happened? We uh, there were a very young couple, and they have their bo how like bought their first house, the three BHK. We were in general talking about guest bedroom, parents' bedroom, their master bedroom, and we were like, okay, what about the kids' room? And they looked at each other face, and they are like, shit, we not thought about it, <laughs> you know. So we what we discussed yeah. just in the guest bedroom. We will be going to design in a such manner that post two years, if they are planning the baby, that they can convert as in a kid's room also. So you know it happens. Sometimes you get into a so much person zone where the people will tell you, like, you know, especially people who are staying with the parents. And trust me, that comes a lot of personal zone where, you know, they wanted to be have the bathroom in a such manner where the parents can be comfortably use the bathrooms, right? We usually never thought about it, but how important are side drawers for the parents to hold it and sit, right? So this kind of discussion cannot be done until unless if we are not going uh, like, you know, customer shoes, right? It is important to have a friendly chat, friendly discussion, more like a consultative, like a doctor. If you are lying to a doctor, your like remedies, like if you are ill, you can never be recovered, right? It's a similar like with us. If you are having a consultation, it is for the client. So if they are more telling about themselves, about the lifestyle, about their parents, about the kids, the more they give us the information, the more we are giving them a consultation and the house come nicely clutter free, spacious, right? Yeah, great advice, great advice. We have spoken about marketing. Let's not talk about sales, right? Because that's what <laughs> comes <laughs> next. So is there any sales strategy that you would like to recommend, which you have found to be most effective in your experience? Marketing and sales always go hand on hand. It can never be one like a marketing and other one is a sales. Is it always a hand on hand? And for any any company, sales is also important, right? Because you are in the industry to 
uh, ensure that you are selling your product. So, what as a in this company a very exclusively uh, sales uh, like you know strategy which I implemented is no false commitment at all. Whatever it is, you should never give any kind of false commitment, right? If you are a very transparent from the day one with your client, the client and the trust, right? If you are providing him a solution, which he is struggling to get it, definitely client will on board with you, right? Because you are giving the quality, you are giving, there is a brand which is trusted. But as a clientele, why would they choose a Kariger? Right? If I will ask this question, why would they choose Kariger? Then I definitely come up with this two factor. A, are they getting it, what they are expecting? And B, will they can trust the Kariger, right? And it's a very emotional decision. Uh, so definitely this is a like, you know, a thing which we have uh, like, you know, which I have implemented in the Kariger to ensure it. Also, uh, we inform the client as in a sales strategy because, of course, uh, like, you know, we have to sell the product also and how we will build the trust. So, we showcase our past client testimonials, the project images and, like, you know, the area, how was in a 3D and how when the project was completed, right? So, they, they can see and they can evaluate by themselves, you know, what we are saying we are justifying also it. Sometimes it happens that customer has a very different, like, you know, concept in the mind. So, we usually sit with them. As a salesperson, they don't gonna say ki, oh, uh, you have this kind of expectation. We are not able to do that. This is absolutely no. If somebody is want to have a solid vodka door, we will get it done for them for sure. So, these are the few strategies which we have implemented. Well said, like, you know, completely agree with you. But, you know, the, in reality, what happens, you always get a very difficult and over-demanding client, right? So... Client is God. Client is always God. Right. right. That is... And, uh, I, I think it's their uh, right to demand. I genuinely think it's every client right to demand. And it is nothing wrong, right? They are investing their money, right? Will you want to be invest anywhere just like a free no, right? When you are investing, you are demanding and it's nothing harm if you are providing their solution, right? Because we are into a solution-based industry. Well said, absolutely. But, you know, there are some times when, you know, because as you said, you know, you don't overcome it or you don't make false promises, right? So, a lot of times what would happen, like, you know, you have committed something, later on the clients want to change it or, you know, you are in that gray area, right? Where, no, you can't clearly say the client is wrong or clearly, right? But you can't really say that, you know, okay, you can really fulfill it because at the end of the day, you also have some bottom line, right? <laughs> uh, what is the techniques and tips to uh, tackle a difficult client? If you can kind of like, you know, guide our listeners on that. Okay, so I generally believe, right, each client is a difficult client. And I'll tell you, in my sales and marketing uh, experience, it's going to be a complete nine, almost nine years. I have met more than 10,000 clients. And I think uh, if we talk about the onboarding, so I think we have onboarded more than 6,000, right? So I have seen this very, very closely. So if we are meeting a client who is very difficult, right? Difficult uh, in terms of, I will say that he needs very specific requirement, which as a company, we are not able to do it, right? So as an advice, as a very open advice for any other company or any other people who are hearing this, have a very vocal and uh, like transparent communication with your client. So I understand that this is your requirement. But, you know, as a company, we are not able to do this and give the justification with logic. Just don't say no, right? Be with your logic. You know, if you are not able to do it, why? Right? And we are able to come up with the second alternative solution, which will be solving your problem, which we are discussing. So, if we, we are able to do like, you know, solve these two problems, one, answering them with the logic, because they will understand if there is a logic. And what is my second alternative solution? Because in the end, if we are not able to do that, they wanted to know which is the second solution, right? Because they have the requirement. 
Well said. One of the best advice on <laughs> dealing with difficult clients, right? So I'll ask a question because this problem that I am also struggling with is that, you know, a lot of times what happens is that I'm working with uh, young startups, right? Who haven't finalized or honed their sales pitch, right? So they are in the middle of, you know, understanding what is the best way to sell the product, right? Uh, and everybody is from a very different industries. And so how do you determine whether they are doing a good job or not? Because see, if I understand, okay, if somebody has your experience in a particular industry, you would know like an out of 10 clients, my sales guy should be landing six clients, right? Or seven clients, then he or she is doing a good job. But what to do when you don't have such kind of a track record? How do you uh, uh, determine or evaluate somebody's sales capability uh, when you have very limited data? Okay, I'll tell you a very simple uh, sales rule is like, you know, lead to qualified, qualified to closure, right? Any any industry, I'll tell you, I come from a very different background. I have done my Bachelor of Journalism and Mass Communication. I'm a certified All India Radio anchor. Then I decided, okay, I wanted to switch this industry. I did my MBA, mass, like, you know, marketing and HR. Then I was into a real estate, right? In Delhi, I almost uh, five years. But there also there was a sales team and when I was interacting with them during the marketing and like you know what as a as a company level what should be my like you know conversion ratio because for any startup company uh, where we struggle is what's my cat what is my ROI simple right this is a, always a struggling point so for my advice it like you know if you can see ki in out of like basically if you are having a 10 basically leads which you are getting if you are able to meet at least five prospect and in five of that at least you are able to close one deal you are on a good path as a individual where when you don't know about this industry at all at all right so this ratio anybody can calculate the 10 leads if the five will qualified and they are able to close one. But ideally, the 10 leads, five qualification, the two should be closed, right? But initially for the people who are not in this industry, if they are able to close one deal also is a very good deal for them. Absolutely. Well said. And you know, this is what, what you know, uh, I advise like a one out of 10, if you're able to close, uh, you are on a good path, right? But the thing is that, you know, a lot of people who are not from this industry, they say like 90% failure rate, right? <laughs> right? It's such a bad thing. How are we performing? So that's why I break it down, you know, 10 to 5, 5 to 1. So how nice it's sounding, right? 5 to 1. It is sounding very nice, right? 10 to <laughs> so as a sales guy, you can you know how to massage the numbers and yes. press that thing and you know, you know. So that's what I say. Like, you know, there's a constant rejection, especially when you're trying to do something new. There's a constant rejection that, uh, you know, you have to face as a sales guy, uh, which uh, people who are not in, from this industry uh, uh, find it really challenging, right? So any tips and tricks on how to not take those rejections personally? Because I'm sure you have had your own share of rejections. 100%. And I think rejection is the first step for the progress of the success, right? Uh, because your rejection will teach you what you have not to do. When you don't know what I have to do, then you learn what you have not to do. And when you know this is I have not to do, you will do in the end what you have to do, right? So any rejection uh, for the any startup people who are starting in uh, like, you know, their career in sales or maybe a lot of startup company. And for any company, sales is a very, very important vertical. You should never feel uh, like, you know, early rejection as an like, you know, downfall for your career or for your company. It is a good because when you have the valuable data of the rejection, write it down all the rejection point. If one client did not turn up, why? Second, why? Third, why? When you have a bucket of your all the rejection, then you can come up with the plan what you have to do the next. Also, you know, now in these days, there is a lot of lot of good consultant also available, like, you know, who also help the initial people who are not into a sales, right? Like, I want to do a startup, but I'm not from the sales and marketing. And I'm a very good in finance, right? I can completely handle my finance. What I can do as a customer, because I don't know the sales, I can hire a consultant who can help me to streamline my sales process and 
process is the key if you want to grow you know in your uh, if you want your company will grow as an individual also if you want to grow in your career you have to a very process oriented person or a process oriented company put it in a process for the sales there is a lot of uh, like you know apps available like a salesforce zoho lead square hubspot put all those system in like you know in your company so initially level only if the things are like you know put in place you are not struggling later and these are not a very expensive like a lead square zoho these are very less uh, investing kind software but this is going to help to see the numbers which is very important for you because here we are not only talking about the leads the qualification the meeting but as a sales person if you will ask me i am always interested to know my client sign up life cycle you know it always make me so uh, excited i want to see when the lead comes in the system and when it close what is my life cycle for that particular client when my client click how much time it takes him to design when the design phase when is the handover so when we have such details right with the software we can always think for the growth perspective and for the new startup company initially their 2 3 months journey is a very important and crucial you know well said i completely agree and you know one of the things when you are explaining about your marketing strategy and the sales one one of the things i really loved about your approach is what are the you know the answers what are the things that you have you know already taken care of that are a risk in the mind of the user so you are showing okay this is the 3d map you are seeing and this is the final result right so uh, now the sales guys what i say you have to understand from the user's perspective right now what is in your case what is happening the client is seeing the 3d models right but now in the back of head he or she is thinking okay 3d model looks nice but whether the end result will also look nice right so that kind of a risk factor is it there in the eye so as a sales guy you have to kind of anticipate yes and you know try to solve those risks which are associated with in the mind of client so well said like you know i am really impressive and you know something to learn for who, how you guys are doing your sales and marketing so yeah very anything to add is, any very important thing is until less if you are not know your client correct you are never able to serve them what exactly they are looking for right always be prepared don't be bland right just now in this era LinkedIn is a, one of the very powerful tool. Like you know, having one meeting, just a bit research about a client. Trust me, it gives a lot, a lot good. Like you know, impact in front of the client when you know where is that person is working by their working style. You can even judge what kind of person maybe he is going to be. Or like just an example, I'll tell you a lot of IT professional, right? Like a uh, MDs or the principal architects or like you know they wanted to be a very spacious or a business people right those who are running a business these kind of people is always want to be a home office setup in the house right because they have a lot of meeting so when you are know like you know your client is a running a x business you can always give them sir what about a home office setup you know i'll just give you one design this will be like you know keeping in mind uh, your uh, requirement he will feel oh you have done some kind of research and if i'm showing you the 3d as a client i should be well know if i will show you the classical theme 3d this is something which is going to be hit and you will feel ah this is something my style and then showing the final product so yes keeping in mind what the client is thinking because you not selling to yourself you are selling to the other person so everything has to be what he is thinking what is good for him not what i want to give in his house basically well said and you know one of the things that i think i forgot to ask is uh, you know we talked about uh, marketing generating leads we talked about sales but one of the important things we forgot to ask and discuss with you is to how to qualify leads because i think that's a lot of times very uh, neglected aspects of the sale right as to like you know a lot of people come to me like why do i want to qualify leads like everybody is my client why would i not want somebody as my client everybody is my client so so tell us a little bit about how do you and what factors do you consider while qualifying the leads very good question actually um, avinash and we face a lot this because when we have a full with the leads and the funnel is completely full right and everybody wants everybody wants to come everybody wants to meet but are they all is my prospect client 
that's a challenge right and as a company if i will uh, like you know open for all the people it is going to be a lot of waste of the time for the people who are not looking for specific service and maybe i'm not able to serve the client who are genuinely looking for my service so one of the important thing one what we do under the qualification we have a specific team right so whenever our leads are coming capturing in a software what we do is that particular team is used to call each and every people and it's not like a oh you have inquired so and so come we no not at all like that we always get into a consultation zone that hi we have received your inquiry we can see that you have shown your interest could you please help me a bit more about it what you know in terms of your requirement what is you are looking for so some for example you know some people who are looking for completely turnkey interiors which we do right but unfortunately somebody who is very fascinated about seeing our puja room but we don't do only puja so we have to make him understand also ki you know i'm sorry i'm not able to do your one puja room because see client emotion is a very uh, subjective like you know and it's not predictable it's very unpredictable we have seen the where the client seen very angry right you know when we say i'm sorry we are not able to take your project because of some x r company rules and policy so our qualified team is ensuring that they are giving the consultation if it is needed somebody who is only looking for the quotation not the because of the x budget issue we ensure it we are giving them a space planning we are giving them a quotation and for that if they feel they want to come we are calling them so the qualification module is going to be run in a this manner where we are qualifying and calling the people who are falling into our company like you know what the parameter we have made set you know well said i completely agree so let's move on to the rapid fire round are you ready asha ah uh, yes okay favorite marketing book or resource ah uh, honestly i wouldn't say the favorite marketing book because i'm always a marketing and sales person so a long back i have read one book which is don't say make them buy by r mukun it's a very unfamiliar book but trust me it is so so good it has all the essentials point for creating a long lasting relationship with the client right this book teach us like you know we should be more uh, like you know consultative or a more into that approach where people will trust you people will buy for you they won't feel you are a sales person they will tell oh you are my advisor so this okay. I really like it. Wow, great choice. The next question is one piece of advice for aspiring marketing and sales professionals. Ah, uh, stay curious and never stop learning. This word and all thanks to AI also, right? This yeah. this AI gen like you know uh, time its marketing landscape are constantly evolving. so keep up with the new trends new technology best practice like you know critical for the success don't stop uh, like you know uh, yourself to do the experiment because the best marketing happen when you are doing a uh, different what the other people have not done it have that faith like you know if you are trying something it's okay if we get the failure and you know we will learn it you know but you know and you never know ki in a during the learning phase maybe if something goes wrong but this is be also the learning we are getting so as a marketing person always try to something different something authentic but keep in mind whatever you are doing is this you are doing for your target audience well said uh next question is what is the best productivity hack that you have discovered ah uh, to block my calendar Yeah, that that's like great every day you know when i reach office or even when i am getting up and i know how my calendar is looking i always always ensure whatever is my most important thing i will block my calendar and not to divert with that at all whatever it is so block the calendar stay focused so that when you are leaving or wrapping up your day you are feeling satisfied within yourself right you are not going home with that satisfaction like that baggage in your mind oh i have to do some work at home or ish my work is little pending so once i genuinely believe uh, time blocking scheduling focus work period is a very important key oh well, well said the next question is what is your favorite social media platform for business engagement Instagram 
definitely okay. <laughs> because you know what it's not about uh, like you know it's only for the real or only for the fashion bloggers or like you know influencer no it's a very very beautiful uh, platform where you can reach out to your target audience where you can show your product your strength of the your product your strength of your company strength of your like you know the services which we are uh, providing and it because it's a visuals right we, uh, and everybody we as an human right I, I would not say Indian, I, I believe because everybody in the world will feel connected with the visual. And I've uh, read somewhere, uh, the one picture talk about thousand words, right? So I think the uh, image has this much of power and Instagram is a beautiful platform where you can connect, you can engage with your audience perfect. Wow. Great answer there. So just as, you know, uh, Live Space has Virat and Anushka, uh, if you could collaborate with any influencer, celebrity or brand, who would it be? Okay. So, of course, Live Space has the collab with Virat and Anushka, but they are not using Live Space Kitchen, right? So I believe, as I always be want to be transparent with my client, so I definitely wanted to be collab with someone who is very authenticate, who is very, uh, like, you know, true in this industry. And I really follow one of the influencer. Her name is Riddhi Kosla. And I genuinely feel she is the become an influencer sometime in a two, three years back. Um, the kind of the work she is doing, right? She is collaborating with a lot of new interior company or the brands and informing the people. Right, which is new in the industry, not in India, even when she's traveling abroad and like, you know, she's educating the people. So I definitely would like to collab with her where she can also uh, like share her experience. And that experience, it goes to my like audience. They can feel the authenticity. They will not feel it's just a market tricks, right? Wow. Great advice. So, yeah. The last question of the podcast. Um, I noticed that you have done a post on generative AI for business leaders, right? And we all know generative AI is impacting every industry. So what are your thoughts on uh, using or the impact of generating AI for the on marketing as a profession? See, the world is uh, like, you know, um, down to line, not even a five years, honestly. The AI is going to be empowered for everybody, right? And it is a very going to be important uh, if the people who are not using the AI, they are definitely going to be back in for sure. So my whole reason why I learned this uh, like, you know, business leader course is because I wanted to understand ki why we are keep just talking about AI, AI, AI. But when I finish that course, I understand how AI can be uh, helpful as a marketing person, as a salesperson or as a company for the company if we are using in a correct manner. Like some of the area, like, you know, as a content creations, right? We can help the AI to generate the high quality marketing material based on my targeted client, based on my company, like, you know, the parameter of what I want it to be. And it will save a lot of time also, right? Similarly, the customer insight and segmentation, I can use the AI where the volumes of my customer data, where I can get to know my customer buying persona, which will help me to work on the more best marketing practice, right? And come up with a better idea. Um, and the most importantly, I feel it's the chatbot and the virtual assistant. What happened currently in our industry, especially in the interiors, not in e-commerce because e-commerce have this like, you know, the chatbot. Uh, interior, we have a person when you are chatting to us, when you are messaging, DM, we are personally replying and it takes a lot of manpower, right? But when we will implementing, which is AI driven chatbots, this can enhance the customer service where we can feed some of the uh, pool of all the kind of the questionnaires which we have last 14 years, 10 years, right? Which we are aware the people will ask. And that can uh, like, you know, make it customized and the chatbot is uh, like chatting with them. So it will definitely uh, A, reduce our timeline, turnaround time and B, it will helping the customer experience satisfaction also. But as in a company level, if I talk about, right, and especially in the interior, I believe ki, uh, we can use the AI in a very smart manner where my client, right, 
uh, my client, I can have a setup of some question, right? My client is answering their question and we are able to create something, a very basic level of the design, which has made based on my client, uh, like, you know, based on their liking. And from that, like for that base, we can take it up more into customize and personalize, right? So initially, because what happened in our industry, we are sitting with you, we are trying to understand, do you like green? Do you like white? Do you like beige? Do you like, uh, like, you know, low height sitting? Or do you like lacquered glass wardrobe? This will solve a lot of, uh, like, you know, the problems. And this will speed out the work. It will be really great where the, as a client, because this is going to be, era, another five years is going to be, everything is a very much into online, right? So I believe the customer is also going to be experienced this journey a lot. So where they can also see, ki, Achha, this is my base homework, how it is looking. And, you know, we, as an expertise, we can pick it from there and uh, then design the final into reality. Yeah, well said. And, you know, I'm actually helping a startup also in the interior design space. So what these guys have done is that these guys have created an app, right? So uh, what happens is just a 30 second game. What will happen? They will show different, different color scheme and design patterns to their clients. So on the basis of which one do you prefer? Do you prefer this one or do you prefer that one? At the end of the 30 second, they will be able to understand what is the actually what kind of design patterns and what kind of uh, color scheme this this guy would like right okay. so instead of showing everything to the client they will just show a limited option to it and improve the efficiency in their sales process and uh, right so a lot of people are doing you know using ai to personalization on a scale right that's that's the term we use a lot so asha thanks a lot for uh, joining us on this podcast sharing your story insights trust me it was really valuable to hear the sales and marketing strategy from you uh, thank you, Avinash. Indeed, it's been lovely talking with you. Wow, what an episode. Asha's thought on sales strategy and customer experience were not theoretical that you can find on a random blog, but very practical and close to reality. It shows that she has herself implemented part or all of these strategies herself. If you enjoyed our conversation, and honestly, how could you not, make sure to subscribe leave us a positive review and share this episode within your network. And don't forget to connect with Asha on LinkedIn. She's always up to something fascinating. Remember folks, great marketing, much like great storytelling, is all about attention to details. This is Avinash signing off. Catch you on the flip side.